Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 60. Yes, sir. Reading from verse number 1. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Isaiah chapter 60 from verse number 1. The Bible says, Arise, comma. Arise, comma. Then shine. For what? For thy light is come. You are not reading with me. Say, Arise, Arise. Shine. shine. For thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Glory to God. Today is Glory Sunday. And I want to um, bring our consciousness to how God works in his glory to uh, move us from one phase to another and from one level of glory and expansion to another. Glory to God. So it says, arise, shine. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. So the light, your light has come, but you are not aware. You are still complaining about what you used to go through before. Are you with me? Okay, you were going through a particular challenge before, and the situation has not changed, but God is saying that that season has wrapped up, and, and you are about to enter a new season. I don't know if you are there. So he's saying that there is a physical part, a physical role you are to play in order to be able to walk in the glory of God. So arise, begin to shine. These two, they are physical parts. Are you with me? Arise means wake up. Arise from your slumber. Forget about that you submitted CV somewhere before and it was rejected. It's time to reapply again and there will be favor this time. Are you with me? There's something the devil does. Uh, the devil tries to program you that before, because you failed at doing something in March, it means the entire year will be like the way March was. Are you with me? But God is not like that. Okay, March might have been in a certain way, but God might have another plan in April. Are you with me? You might not rejoice the way you want in June, but there's a testimony around July waiting for you. Are you with me? And when you don't understand the complexity of the universe, you will not understand the creator's manual and his, and his way of walking. Are you with me? So he said, arise, shine, because that thing that uh, you had that has weakened you and you've given up and you've concluded that it will not work. Are you with me? God is saying that it is time to try it again because it's time to shine forth and it will start working. Glory to God. So even if it is your time to begin to see the glory of God, if you don't do the human part of arising, are you with me? And making that effort again, it will still not materialize. Glory to God. So Jesus, Jesus queried the children of Israel from time to time. He said, you know not the hour of your visitation. When the hour of your visitation comes, you arise and you press for it. Glory to God. He said, you know not the hour of your visitation. Glory to God. Before I, I expand a little more about arise, I want to take us to a concept in Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. While the earth remaineth, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. So, the reality of these changes is that as long as you are on the earth, you experience these fluctuations. You experience day, you experience night, you experience cold. You experience heat. Are you with me? Summer and winter. Now, there are two places these realities are not found in. This reality is not in heaven and is not in hell also. Are you with me? So in hell, there is no night. There is no day. There is no cold. There is no winter. I don't know if you are getting me. It is just burning. Okay. In heaven, there is no day. There is no night. Are you sure you are with me? So he said, while the earth remained, that means what God used in creating a physical cosmos was the, was the scientific stability of weather and climate change. 
And those who are studying science every day, they are clamoring about, oh, climate change, oh, there is flood in uh, Borunus Meduguri, uh, there is this one here, uh, there is heat wave in, 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 in um, Northern Europe, and they are, they are, they are tussling their head every day about climate change. About, he came, visited Nigeria, talked a little about climate change, invested some uh, uh, millions of dollars in climate change, and all that, we are seeing it. But the scripture tells us clearly, say, while the earth remaineth, as long as we are here, seed time and harvest will never stop. Are you with me? Please follow me. I want you to follow me very well. If you have never attended the service, follow me for this service. Seed time and harvest will never cease as long as the earth remains. These conditions that you would experience on the earth, whether you are born again or not, you would experience it. So if, if it is raining, if it is raining in Egbeda, it will fall on your roof on your even roof. when you are born again or you are not born again. Are you with me? Okay, so this is one of the reality why you see a lot of persons, you see some persons, they are not serving God they don't go to church. On Sunday morning like this, they are watching Super Sport or, or, or playing um, a PS. I don't know if you are with me or, 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 or watching CNN or watching the Alloy Rim. I don't know if you are there. So many things they occupy their Sunday with and they don't want to hear things about God. Are you there? And you look at them financially, they are doing well. You check their account, they are in excess. You that go to church to pray, you are still the one trekking back home. I don't know if you are with me. Uh, so and and now he is he didn't go to church to pray and is sitting what, um, playing PS with juice and uh, whatever he wants chicken turkey everything that he wants he microwaves them and he's having them at his beck and call are you there why you that came to church to pray are you with me uh, and praised and did everything that it looks as though God is supposed to look upon this your praise and your prayer and and make something appear in your fridge I don't know if you are there and it looks as though you are the one that is still broke. So it's not that God is unfaithful. No, 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 no. The problem is that you are missing a law. It's called seed time and harvest. It's called seed time and harvest. That period where you had the opportunity for your dad to sit you down and say, go to school. Or travel to learn this trade with my friend that is in Kaduna. But you said you want to be rigmaroling and meandering like somebody who does not have parents and focus. Now dad is dead and gone and you are 35. A skill you don't have, certificate you don't have. What you have to inherit now is poverty and suffering. And pastor's prayer won't change it. It's called seed time and harvest. Are you with me? Between 15 and 30 years, that is when you plant the seed of what you want to see when you are 60. And between 15 and 30 years, if all you plant is air, what you will get between 30 and 60 is the wind. And as long as we are in this earth, maybe in the, in the by and by, when the morning comes, when the saints of God shall be gathered, are you with me? Aha, uh -huh. we, will, we will do all that in the by and by. Are you with me? All your praises and all your reward, they are good in heaven. But on earth here, yeah, those who do not sow has been concluded that they should not reap. So I'm, 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 I'm bringing you into another type of revelation on Glory Sunday. Are you with me? Glory Sunday, I want to show you how to express that glory of God as God has designed and show us a better perspective glory is splendor glory is excellence if you read Revelation chapter 21 22 the Bible said the streets of heaven is paved with gold are you with me Solomon built the temple with gold David was successful all these people who walked with God they weren't broke Abraham wasn't broke are you with me this man they walked with God, they saw the glory of God, and they were wealthy. They were successful and great men in their day. Because they understand not to only pray, but to also sow. Are you with me? So he said, while the earth remaineth, are we still on the earth? How many of us have gone to heaven? You are still here, is it not so? Okay, as long as you are here, you can take this home. 
Seed time and harvest will not cease. What it means is that if you have spent your January to June, moving from place to place and planting nothing that you will harvest, the remaining half of this year, even while we are praying and trusting God that it will turn out the best way, you will reap what you have sown between January and June. And the consciousness and the consciousness of, oh, pray, let God change it, pray, let God change it, has turned the church to begin to move away from reality and God is not a magician. Are you with me? God takes, took physical clay to form man. Which means man must interact and face reality. Man must tell himself the truth about work. Work is not a sin. If you don't have a job, you are supposed to go hungry. That is God's will for you. The will of God for a man who sleeps when others are going to work is to be broke, to be hungry, and to have nothing. That's God's will. So, I was talking with someone yesterday, and when I was done talking to the person, I was provoked in my spirit. Okay, working for someone, you ain't working for someone. You are doing your own business. Then I'm, I'm trying to find out what and what is the effort you are putting in your own business. I saw that no effort is being put. What you are doing here is that Onga is knocking at the door already. I, I know where you are going if you continue like this. Are you with me? So we must come as a church to understand that as long as you want to spend money, don't be exchanging it with prayer. God will bless the work of your hand. Not the prayer of your mouth. So, you have a work in your hand. Then you pray about the work. God blesses it. As it rains, whether you are born again or not, those that have corn in their farm, their corn will grow, even if they are from Kaduna and they are Shites Muslims. And you are very It will rain to flood there, and when it's time to harvest, the man who doesn't even believe in God at all will harvest. Because while the earth remains, the earth has been given instruction to empower seed and not mouth. So I am, my mood is different this morning because I am angry. Okay, I'm provoking my spirit and I want to provoke him. Yeah. Are you sure you are with me? The earth has been programmed to do what? To empower seed. So if there is no seed in the soil, there is nothing for the soil to do what? To empower. Same also the cosmos, the universe, the earth is organized, orchestrated to also empower ideas. And those who are doing something, making effort to make it come into reality. So those who are doing nothing, what they get back is nothing. So I will, I will, I will drive you through. I will just take you on a brief journey and see where we can cover before Minister Steve takes us in glory worship. Are you with me? Are you sure you are with me? While the earth remained, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not what? Cease. The Bible says in the beginning, God moved and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the waters. And God said, let there be light. And I was wondering, Darkness was upon the deep. And darkness is not the season where things are okay. So I was wondering, why did God not use the light to cancel darkness totally? 
Because as I looked at the creation, I was expecting as God said, let there be light, there should be no darkness at all. But as I proceeded, I observed that no. God said, let there be light. Then he divided light from darkness. Why not wipe out darkness? Why divide it? Then call the light day and he called the darkness night. <laughs> as long as you live on the earth, problem is part of your life. It's your handbag. If it doesn't come in March, it might come in June. If it doesn't come in June, it's coming around September. If it's not in September, it's around December. Problem. <clears throat> because the earth is coded to be night and day. That means positive and negative. And that that's, electricity cannot flow until this is established. There must be positive, there must be negative. So all those who are praying to only have positive, they are not serious yet. They are not serious yet. So there is the place. There is the place of things happening that you didn't expect for them to happen. So if things did not go well in first quarter, don't use that to define yourself because the Bible says seasons and times will change. So don't use one failure to conclude your entire life. What God is telling you here clearly is that for you to be successful, you must arm your mind with a consciousness. January to December cannot be bad. First understanding. January to December cannot be what? Cannot be bad. If you enter January, it's not okay. Don't worry, just try to cope. As you enter February, season will change. So God is telling you that every year you have changes. Cold time will happen. Most time people will draw in cold. Are you with me? Winter time will happen. Most time people will draw. Are you with me? So situations will come within the year that will have to make you adjust and make changes until another season will come where things will begin to move the right way. Are you there? Yes, the period where things were slow, you slow down project also. The period where things move fast, you achieve more also. So, businessmen don't expect every business to blossom. They do some. If it's moving well, they invest more. The one they observe is not moving, they withdraw. I don't know if you are with me. Why? Why? The consciousness is that business will definitely not be smooth from January to December. So, you need to know the season of your business. That is the time to invest more. The period where it's not your season, you relax a little, reduce your expenses. I don't know if you are there. Okay, but what God is trying to tell you is that a man who is expecting every day to be like Christmas, that man is a child. He's trying to tell you that seasons will come and they will change. And they are, they are going to impact on your decision. And if you don't know how to adjust when a season of adjustment comes, you experience losses. Are you with me? Yes, Is somebody with me? Yes, Can I take you one step deeper? Give me Proverbs chapter 20 verse number 4. <laughs> so the first understanding I showed you in that Genesis uh, is that seasons will change. Are you going through difficulty right now? Don't conclude that that's what your life must be about. No. Just hold on, hang on, trust in the Lord. The season will soon change. Are you with me? As long as you are doing something, keep praying and trusting God. What will happen? That season of the difficulty will change and another season will come. When a new season comes, that's when the Bible says, arise. Forget about the previous quarter that was not okay. That season has rolled away. And now a new season has come. So don't think about the former things because I've decided to make all things new. Have you ever been in a season in your life where you were in a season and you tried to get out strength and you could not? Yes, uh, it was so bad that you had to move from the house you had to go and share with your friend. Are you with me? Because you could not meet up with the rent. Things was that bad was that bad and then you enter into another season you are able to rent a house I don't know if you are getting me you are able to furnish the house I don't know if you are with me 
and you just see money flowing, 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 and you were even able to get a car. Are you with me? That period where you were able to get a car, and you were able to rent a house, you were able to take care of yourself more, and you are making plans to get married, that season is the season called the glory of God is risen upon you. Are you sure you are with me? Are you sure you are with me? So you go through seasons and there is a time where God just makes the ground to be softer. And you just observe that things are moving better than the way it was before. Now, it's a, it's a season. You need to know the open door. Understand that it's a season. Take advantage of that season to solidify a new level. Then sustain it if the season change again. I don't know if you are with me. So men... Men who are successful, they know how to observe seasons. They know how to endure when the season change negatively. And they know how to leap when the season change positively. When the season change for your good, you observe that things move faster. Things look easier. Those times, the glory of God is what? Is risen upon you. Because God is saying, according to the calendar of your destiny... There is a promotion you are supposed to have around now. And we are here to execute it. Are you with me? Are you sure you are with me? The seasons change to give us one consciousness that God doesn't want us to tie ourselves or our mentality to a mistake that has happened in the past. Are you with me? And also does not also want you to just get used to, oh, these things that is looking sweet. It will just remain sweet like that continually. I don't know if you are getting me. Then when it changes, you begin to move into depression. No, 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 no. You are supposed to every day expect the best. Prepare for the worst. So you don't allow bad situation get to your heart and bring you to depression. And at the same time, you are not pessimistic. You are optimistic for things to become also better. Glory to God. So every day you are excited. Somebody's wondering, why are you able to praise God in this situation? Just say, ah, I observed that the season changed, so I adjusted to the season. I don't know if you are getting me. So as a pastor, as a pastor, I have seasons. There are some seasons, more persons believe in me. More persons. I will see new persons. They will just come, support the work. Somebody will just come from somewhere and say, I'm, I'm supporting the church with this. I'm supporting this. I don't know if you are getting me. Then there's another season. Some persons who were saying they were very loyal will suddenly start misbehaving. And suddenly start they will just stop all they were doing for God in the church. Are you with me? A demon will come over them and they will just start misbehaving. Some of them will even leave the church. Are you getting me? Are you sure you are with me? So, for every three months, we always have somebody who, who suspended themselves. Are you with me? Like we have one that wants to ap apologize to the choir now after staying away for three months. So, he, he wants to ap apologize to the choir today now. After staying away for what? For three months. So that's what I'm trying to say. It's a season. So when that season of their madness come, let them go. Don't try to make who is season has expired with you to stay. You will suffer yourself. So once people misbehave, I just go back to my drawing board and I say, it's a new season. And it's a new dawn. Fresh anointing. Season of revival. Yeah. Two persons I gave church and I said these persons are going to be standing here. I divided the church because God said it's time for us to grow and all that. I had a meeting with them in my office. After I had the meeting, two weeks later, two of them left the church. And we were around 100 and something at that time. Are you with me? After they left, what happened? A new season came. What was the new season? Is what you are saying. The expansion you are saying. We grew times, almost times times three, more than times two from the 100 and something we're doing before they left. So whenever God wants to expand me, I used to understand that there is to be season change. One of the signs is that one person misbehave. I don't know if you are getting me. The person will misbehave and will suddenly not be part of the work again. And the, and the, the, the code, the lesson, the lesson learned there. Those who leave you based on the change of season, when the season also change, don't bring them back into that space. No, don't bring them back into that space. Don't bring them back into that space. Love them from far. Support them from far. But don't bring them back into that space. 
I see a lot of ladies, they make very unwise decisions. A guy came, he deceived you. He said, we pay your diary. He didn't pay your diary. He got you pregnant. He said, we see your people. He kept sweet Martin, you, sweet Martin, you. Then you got pregnant. Then finally he left you. Huh? Then you struggled, you suffered and everything. Gave birth to the child. After all, you have suffered. Then while the child was like three years old, he came back. And he was able to see impregnate you again. You have mental problem. He was able to impregnate you again. Huh? So what you have recovered, the, the recovery, everything that you have done. He said, hey, no, pastor, I won't burn the children for one place. I see you. Tell somebody who said, I see you. <laughs> the person did not hear you. Tell the person, by the, the other person by the side, say, you not see me. will not plow by reason of the cold. The sluggard, he will not plow. He has an excuse that there is cold and sleep is sweet between 5 and 6. So he cannot wake up and go to work. By reason of the cold, the sluggard, the lazy man, huh? he will not go out because around 4, it started raining. And as it started raining, he drew the duvet and entered under. While people were going to the island for work, even while it was raining, he was under duvet. So, the sluggard had a reason. What is his reason? There is cold. Huh? <laughs> Why did he call him a lazy man? He has a reason. He said because because there were those who Entered the rain and the cold to walk. The condition was the same, but himself was sleeping. So the Bible calls him lazy, not because there's no cold, but because some person still went to walk with the cold. So it was a comparative antithesis. Oh, you didn't get me. Uh, yes, by comparative analysis, uh, the scripture purported to us that this man who had an excuse for not doing what he was supposed to do as a result of cold, the Bible said what? is a lazy man. And there is a will of God that is declared for him. Look at the will of God. Therefore, he shall beg in harvest. Urgent 2 k By month end, he will need urgent to get to sub. Because while he's on that duvet, he's not totally sleeping. He was browsing. So he likes to stay online. Are you with me? But he doesn't like to walk. So he must need urgent to get to sub. Are you with me? Okay. Therefore, he shall beg. He shall do what? Yes. What is the will of God for who refuse to walk? Yes. He shall do what? Yes. Beg in harvest. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. I am not standing before you preaching by the offering members give to me. I have carried block instead of asking members for money. Me. I do business instead of asking members for money. 
No member in this ministry, Dubai, Calabar, Lagos, will say, I knocked their door. Since the ministry, in fact, in fact, in fact, you met me married. You met me with a daughter. You met me with a car. You met me flying. You met me with business. So, you didn't even meet me when I was carrying concrete. So, I did not come to take from you. I came to add to you. To be of blessing to you. Are you with me? Now, I stand to tell you as your pastor. If you will not walk, poverty is your destiny. Walk is not against the will of God. When God made Adam, the first thing he gave him was walk before prayer. And God did not have morning service. He was meeting with Adam in the cool of the evening. Walk morning to evening, I come in the evening. So weekly service was in the evening. Only Sabbath day was holy. Every other day was evening service. Why? Morning to evening, go where? Go to work! Go to work! Go to work! But pastor, but pastor, pastor, I'm a lady. All I just need now is a husband. Go to work. When Sammy brought a fiancée to me and said, sir, I've seen a lady I want to marry. And we checked her. She walks with Pampe. I said, I approve. I open. I said, I approve. I approve. So approve. Somebody say approved. Approved. Aunt Maria, all she has is Brazilian hair and eyelash that is seven inches. What does she do for a living? If you come here and you are looking for a man to marry. Eh? If you want to do it fast, go and start working in the bank or start work as a lady. Work somewhere. You will get husband fast here. Yeah. If you come here looking for husband and you are a street girl, you will you will last long. I'm the one telling you, not approved. Not approved. Here, man walk. Woman walk. Yes. Have you observed for the past four months you've not seen my wife? My wife is doing business. I had to release her for business trip. Yes. While I'm preaching, she's doing business. She's managing my business. She was working with a VFS, Canadian Embassy. I told her to resign and come and manage my company for me. And she's managing my company. Managing my company. Very well, so that I can I can really attend to you people and feed you well. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. We are not here joking. Yeah. We have five solid churches in Lagos. Yes, sir. One in Ojo, one in Anupaja, one at the Korodu, one on the island. Then the dome is in the middle. So, where are you? Where are you right now? You are in the metamorphosis of the dome. You are seated in the metamorphosis of the dome. You have not, you have not come to Kingdom Prevailers Church yet. This is this is Pangolo. It's not Kingdom Prevailers Church. When you when you enter when you enter Kingdom Prevailers Church, 
The first thing every first time I will say, is this in Nigeria or abroad? That's the first thing. So, so all you are seeing now is what? Bangolo. Yeah. You are in the metamorphosis. Are you with me? From egg stage. We have never went that lava. We are seeing egg. Yeah. Therefore, shall he beg in harvest? I don't want to have the kingdom prevailer that is begging for money. From today, any member in the church that meets you on the road and say urgent 2K, urgent 1K, urgent. Tell them that they should they should. That church has help structure. They should chat church. That church is, don't give any member anything. Yes. 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 Refer them to church. Because we now have people who come to church. They check who is dressing well and they start meeting them at the gate and be begging them money. Some people now stay away from church because when they come, somebody must ask them for money. Band. 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 No begging here. I said no begging here. If you have a need, go to church office. Chat Mary. Yes. Chat Mary. When you chat Mary, we'll, ask, we'll find out why you're not working. We'll find out everything first. Welcome. Are you sure you're with me? Are you sure you're with me? Yeah. Therefore, shall he beg in harvest? And what shall he have at the end of the day? Nothing. So the man that sows wind, what the scripture said he's supposed to harvest is wind. Is what? Is wind. Is wind. So arise. Arise. Shine. The glory of God is risen. When the glory is risen, things begin to move faster on their own. Things begin to happen on their own accord. You begin to observe that things are softer and easier because the glory of God is risen. It's time, it's that, that's the time to forget about all the problems. Forget about the, what led to depression and one person that disappointed you, one business that didn't work. No. You put all that behind you. It's time to begin to make effort afresh again. Are you with me? Let's close with Gideon. There's somebody Gideon's story will bless here. Because you are seeing yourself that things somehow. But God is saying you are a mighty man. God is saying you are a mighty woman. God is saying your future is great. But you are using your background to change your mind. Even when the glory of God is risen upon you. Are you with me? He said, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. That's Gideon. And said unto him, the Lord is with thee. Thou what? Mighty man of valor. The Lord is with thee. Thou what? Mighty man of valor. Gideon was seeing himself as a non-entity. As someone that cannot amount to anything. But the angel said, you are a mighty man of valor. Are you with me? The next verse. Look at it. And Gideon said unto him, Oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, if you are with me, if everything is okay, why then is all this befalling us? Where be all these miracles which our fathers told us of? Saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the men. So what's he doing? He's complaining. He's complaining about all that has happened. Just like somebody, I'm saying, when the glory of God arises, things become soft. That somebody says, mm. this year has not been very okay for me. Since this naira began to move, 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 move. No, this year is not. I don't know if you are getting me. I'm saying that even in the situation, when the glory of God arises upon you, what happens? Things become softer and easier and more favor and more doors begin to happen to you on their own with lesser stress. Are you with me? So Gideon kept complaining. The next verse. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might. And thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianite. Have not I sent thee? Verse 15, which is where I'm going. And where I will round up. And he said unto him, 
Oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? <laughs> Look at the mentality. My family, they are the poorest among the family in the city of Manasseh. Are you with me? Uh -huh. Then, among the poorest, so I am the least in my father's house among the most poorest. <laughs> When the glory of God has risen upon you, and he has said you are a mighty man, and he has said you should go in this thy might, but what you can see is that first of all, the people from my village, all of them, they are the, my village is the poorest town in the state. And inside this poorest town, so my family is the poorest family in that state. Then inside the family, so I am the least inside the poorest family. Hey, when poverty has eaten deep and taken root to the point that you cannot even believe that anything good can come out of Israel, like Nathaniel said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And yet he's from Nazareth, and he has re he has declared that even nothing good can come out of his own life. So for him, he has concluded that he cannot amount to anything. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. The season has changed. Are you with me? Yes, are you sure you are with me? Yes, so, have there been bad news? It's time to drop it. As we are approaching towards the end of the year, I said the glory of God, what? Is risen upon thee. Favor will begin to come. Amen. We have done our 40 days fasting and prayer for mercy. It is time to now begin to believe God that this prayer that we did for 40 days, crying to him for mercy, what has happened? We'll begin to see the manifestation that will not end the year the way we started the year. To bless the name of the Lord.